Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this session of my NPTEL course, Appreciating Linguistics or Typological Approach. I am going to talk about um, a few things related to the goals and objectives of this course. You can consider it as a part of your introductory lectures. Um, Let us just try to understand why this particular course is giving so much of emphasis on typology and what typology? Linguistic typology. So, when I say linguistic typology that means I am definitely going to discuss what are the different kinds of or what are the different types of languages that you encounter um, in the day to day life. You may or may not understand all of them, but that does not mean that uh, you do not uh, or you do you, you, you do not encounter uh, the kind of languages that human beings speak. As you remember, I have always been talking about um, even if you check uh, my the, the introduction video which was uploaded long back, um, it is about natural language and when I say natural language, it is it's language, it is the language used by the human beings, right. Um, and when I say it is used by the human beings then that means definitely you get an idea that being a human you are privileged and the privilege lies in the um, in the ability or, or capability if I can say of using a language to communicate, right. So, uh, for sure communication is one of the one of the primary goals of language, but that that does not mean that that is the only goal. There are many more things, but then we will try to approach it from how you understand or how you uh, how you find out that human languages could be of many types and the kind of languages that you that you hear in the day to day life, uh, whether um, they have some similarities or differences. Being um, being natural language, I am sure they would have certain kind of similarities. And since they have certain kind of similarities, they might also have differences. And to account for the similarities and differences, we have this course linguistic typology, right. So, I will give you a situation. Um, Let us say, you are in, in an elevator or a lift and um, there are two people standing next to you and they are talking in a, in a language which you do not understand, right. And they, these are the foreign languages for you and uh, that the words are, are absolutely noisy for you because you do not understand a single thing that they are talking or they are conversing with. So, uh, since you do not understand their speech or since you do not understand what they are talking, this would come to you as just plain noise, right? And it does not make any sense. But something which is noise to you is actually communication for the people who speak that language. So, how do you know whether uh, it is whether they are communicating or not? They are communicating because it is an it is a continuous ongoing communication, it is a continuous ongoing conversation. One person is speaking, the other person is responding and this process goes on. Then there could be some sort of discussions happening among themselves like between themselves and then um, there is let us say there is a laughter, there is a silence, there are there is a probably there are certain things which they do not agree with each other. So, these kind of clues will give you an idea that something that you feel is a noise is actually not a noise, it is a language. And some sounds might be completely gibberish, but then that does not mean that um, this is not considered as a language. This will be a language which you do not understand. So, what is your experience so far um, when you encounter such situations or when you encounter such incidents? That means, different people speak different languages. And when different people are speaking different languages, you can actually put them in the uh, in various types, right. If you speak English, somebody else is speaking Hindi, the third person is speaking Telugu or Tamil, that means English, Hindi um, and Telugu or Tamil, they belong to different language families or they, they let us not go into the language families for the moment, they definitely belong to different language types. English type will have different phrases. Hindi type will have different phrases and Telugu type will have different phrases. Those who know a bit about linguistic typology or, or um, the, the language families which are spoken in the, in the country, you would understand that Hindi as a language has similarity let us say with Marathi or with Gujarati. Telugu as a language has similarity with let us say Tamil or, or Malayalam or 
Kannada. So, these languages they belong to a separate type and Hindi type language they belong to a different type. So, Hindi and related languages they are Indo-Aryan languages, Telugu and related languages are Dravidian languages. So, these are genealogically similar. So, Telugu, Tamil, Kannada and Malayalam they are typologically similar as well as uh, genealogically similar. On the other hand, we have Hindi, uh, Gujarati, Marathi, Bangla, Odia, they are also genealogically similar plus typologically similar, right. So, what we are going to do, what is the goal of this, this particular course is that we need to find out how to identify um, different types and what does this division tell us about the languages that we speak or the languages that we encounter. I will not say speak because um, though many of the Indians are, um, are like um, multilinguals, but then let us approach it from the, from the perspective of knowing a language. You may not, uh, you may not speak that, but you are aware that such a language exists, right. So, on this note, let us uh, have examples from four different languages. I would follow these empirical evidences or these empirical data uh, from the book Introducing Language Typology published by Cambridge University Press and the author is Edith Morabsik, okay. So, now let us look at um, four examples that Edith would give. The first example is from English, the second one is in Polish, the third one is Hungarian and the fourth one is Turkish, right. The word orders are different, the kind of phrases used that is different, but what is same? The meaning is same, right. So, um, I was just talking about the elevator experience a while ago. You are standing besides, um, sorry, you are standing beside two people who are not speaking a language that you know, that you know. So, which is why you happen to consider it as just simple noise. So, um, all these languages, the four um, examples that we have here, English, Polish, Hungarian and Turkish, um, let us see how they are different and how they are similar, if at all there is any similarity or if at all there is any difference. Let us look at the, uh, the words or let us look at the phrases that they use. Um, the first one you are writing or sorry, the first one what you see there is a sentence give us today our daily bread. What do you understand? What is the meaning of it? That means, you are asking somebody or requesting somebody, it is an imperative sentence Im with imperative mood um, and you are saying, please give us today our daily bread, right. So, here what do you have? You have the verb, then you have a pronoun that is us, then you have today which is an adverb, then you have another pronoun then daily um, that is going to also be considered as an adjective because it is primarily qualifying the bread which is the noun. So, in this such kind of a construction if you see how do you have the word order. The word order starts from the verb which is give, then you have the object which is us, then you are talking about what is to be given that our daily bread that is another object and then the you have an adverb that is today. So, uh, if I write it over here, so the English example that you have here, it is the verb, then the object, then there would be another object, no sorry, the first one is uh, give, the second one is object 1, the third one is an adverb, the fourth one is another object. So, that is how you have the word order. How about the now let us look at the second example or the example given in Polish. So, in this language let us see whether we follow this V O ad O policy or not. So, what is that? The first you have bread okay? and this bread is not our daily bread, it is written bread our daily. right? So, maybe what I will do, I will write the English example like this. So, first is verb, then you have the uh, pronoun, then you have the um, adverb, next you have pronoun, then you have adjective and then you have noun. 
So, that is how um, the English example um, organize the words. In the second one, first you have the noun, then you have a pronoun, third one is what? Third one is an adjective, fourth one is the verb, fifth one to us. So, that is going to be a pronoun again, then finally, you have an adverb. That is how Polish looks like. And Hungarian, uh, let us see if we have similar kind of a construction or different. Here, the first phrase is daily. So, that is an adjective in that this case. Second one is our bread, which is the combination of your um, noun that carries the pronoun which is an adjective right so our pro, sorry which is uh, which is a qualifier so when you say our bread so bread is a noun which is uh, which is occurring or which is manifested with the um, with the pronoun okay so adjective noun then you have the verb then there is the then what is that so meg is written as p r e f so that's a marker right so um, and when you write so let's write it as pref and then we have to us which is another let's say pronoun that comes with a preposition to then you have today which is the adverb okay how about turkish let's look at turkish data turkish data will have daily that is the adjective here our bread which is noun that comes with a pronoun to us something similar we had it in hungarian so, to us is again going to be um, the pronoun with a preposition. Then there is today, which is an jack, which is an adverb, and finally verb. So, um, what is to notice here? There are different types of languages we have. So looking just by looking at the data, you can see that the word order is different here. Sometimes the verb is in the sentence, sentence initial position as in English, but in Hungarian the adjective daily which is daily bread that is there in the sentence initial position. In Polish it is the noun which is in the sentence initial position which is bread and in Turkish it is daily which is adjective here occupies the sentence initial position right. So, uh, this would give you an idea that the languages here are different. They are not only different on the basis of the word order, but also the lexical differences. The way the words are manifested that is also different um, in these four languages. So, now let us see, um, we will go to the next set of data to find out if there is any similarity between any language. So, considering English, Polish, Hungarian and Turkish, they do not really give us an idea that languages could be similar. The next set of data would tell you um, if there is any similarity at all, differences we have already seen. Now, let us look at the similarities that languages might have. So, in this case, we have data from uh, German and from Swedish. Again, the empirical data has come from um, Moravzik's book, Introduction, Introducing Language Typology, published by Cambridge University Press. Get a copy of the book if possible. So, that you can you can get to know about more information related to linguistic typology on your own right. So, uh, fine let us look at these two uh, languages data given in given in this slide. Um, we saw a lot of differences when you discuss languages like English, Polish, Hungarian and Turkish. However, in 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 the case of German and Swedish you might see similarities more than differences. So, let us see how the similarities are, are, are more than the differences at least as far as the word order is concerned. So, uh, the same example our daily bread give us today like give us today our daily bread. So, here the first word is our which is the German counterpart given here look at the data. So, in German also you have our daily bread give us today and in Swedish also you have the same thing. So, the what is similar here? Similarity is in the word order. If it is German, 
then also you have. So, let me just write here. So, both German and Swedish will have the pronoun first which is our, then you have daily that is the adjective, then you have bread which is noun, then give that is the verb and us which is a pronoun again and today that is an adverb. So, there is a similarity in the word order uh, when you compare German and Swedish. Besides the word order similarity, you would also see there is a lot of lexical similarity as far as phonology is concerned. At least in case of the verbs, you would see um, there is some similarity. So, this is give, this is give. So, g, e sound that is remaining same and in case of Swedish, it is v and in case of German that is b, right. So, broad and broad, very similar uns and os some kind of similar. So, the last the words for today might not be, but you can see not only we have um, word order similarities in these two languages, we also have uh, the lexical and the phonological similarity or I can say the, the phonetic similarity in um, languages like German and Swedish. Okay? So, now let us see um, since we saw there could be differences in languages as in Turkish, Hungarian, Swedish, oh sorry, Turkish, Hungarian, Polish, and English, and there could be similarities as in um, German and Swedish. Let us focus more on the similarities for the moment. Why do you think two languages are similar? Okay? Before that, I would try to, um, try to draw your attention um, to the Indian languages for that matter, as I just discussed a while ago. Uh, you might see a lot of similarities in the, in, in the words. Uh, let us say in Hindi and in and in Odia, which are Indo Aryan languages. So, ghar is in Hindi is house and in Odia it is ghara. So, the only difference that you see between Odia and Hindi is that in Odia this ends with a with a vowel and in Hindi it ends with a consonant, the ra sound, and in Odia it ends with the o sound, right. Besides that, you can also find out a lot of uh, similarities in languages like Hindi and Gujarati for that matter, or Hindi and, um, and um, let us say Marathi for that matter. A lot of words are similar, you just need to find out. And before that, you need to know, um, since we were talking about the word order, all these languages under the category of Indo-Aryan would have the subject, object and the verb word order. Okay? My suggestion for you uh, to check it for your own language. If you are new to linguistics, you need to know um, what sort of a word, what sort of a word order your language follows. In most of the cases, you see it will be S O V, right? So I'll give you a Hindi example over here. So uh, it is maine, then this would be khana, this would be khaya. Okay. So, this is uh, I am just I am not really giving you uh, the case marking and stuff like that. So, I will just write uh, this is the subject which is mene, okay. khana would be what? Khana is, is the object and what is khaya? That would be the verb, right. So, this is I, um, let me just write this one here. So, this is I, this is food and this is eight. The simple gloss, I am not really writing any kind of case marking and stuff like that. And what does it mean? I ate food. Now, compare the English example I ate food with the Hindi example maine khana khaya. So, what sort of similarity or difference that you see? The clear difference that emerges if you compare these two constructions as far as the word order is concerned. In English, this is subject, verb and object. So, this would be S, V and O that is the English word order. When the same sentence you are trying to write in Hindi, this is going to be S, O and V, right. So, why do not you check which word order does your language follow or which word order languages that you know they follow, right. 
So, with this information, um, this is this is just a difference, but what are the similarities? There are many more and we have already shown you the, the German and Swedish example. Um, as far as Hindi and English are English as language is concerned, there are a lot of lexical similarity or phonetic similarity. Okay? So, we will get back to it later, but for the moment let us just get an idea how the similarities in languages they are understood in linguistics literature. Why do you think languages could be similar? What could have been the possible reasons why certain languages have similar sounds, similar words, similar word order type? So, what could have been the possible reason? Think about it. And if you scan through the existing literature available and the book that I suggested and where I am drawing a lot of references from, uh, in such cases these are uh, if you look at the slides the, there is a list of reasons why languages are considered to be similar. The first reason is there is genetic relatedness which we which if you if you go back and try to remember uh, I was talking about genealogical typology. So, genealogical typology is related to genetics of certain languages. So, if you try to draw or if you try to put them together under categories, you can actually draw the genealogy that follows these languages. So, there is a mother language, then there would be daughter languages, then there would be sister languages, right. So, genetically they are related to each other. So, one very important or one of the most prominent reason why languages have similarities uh, is genetic relatedness. So, we will check it or we will talk about it in more detail later, but let us just find out what could be the possible reason. So, reason number 1 is this. What is the reason number 2? Reason number 2 is language contact. So, when you say language contact that means I am talking about the geographical um, similarity. So, or sorry the geographical contact when two different communities and when I say communities I will primarily focus on the speech communities when uh, two different speech communities when they share the language area or the geographic area um, or the regional uh, contact in that case also you find out a lot of languages they do behave similarly or the other way around. In most of the cases because of the language contact you find out a lot of language similarities are available or are found. So, the second reason is when languages come in contact with each other they develop similar features. So, you are you tend to find out more similarity because of the geographical proximity that they have or the regional uh, contact that they have. So, that is the second reason. What is the third reason? The third reason is the shared cultural environment. So, let us say you have culturally you have a lot of similarities. So, that, that would also affect your language or that would not I will not use the word affect that would impact your language that will have um, that will definitely have some impact on both the languages. So, the cultural similarity will result in the linguistic similarity or the speech similarity. So, if two different speech communities they have shared cultural linkage then very likely you are going to find out some similarities.